ladies and gentlemen it is time for us to now move on to the business leaders round table on the other side this is going to be our third panel of the day and let's meet the entrepreneurs who've built brands in bharat for bharat who became the best sellers over the years well this session is going to be moderated uh, by miss nazia alwi editor exchange for media.com so we just request nazia firstly to join us as the moderator on the stage ladies and gentlemen a huge round of applause for our moderator and it is time for us to now call upon our panel members one by one first up with the mightiest round of applause let's welcome on the stage mr arjun ranga md cycle pure agarbatti's who's taken out his valuable time today Mr CK Kumarwal the CEO and co-founder Natural Salons and Spa thank you so much sir for joining us a huge huge round of applause Nirupam Sahai ED and CEO Lighting Consumer Durable Surya Roshni thank you so much for your valuable time and for Mr V Noshad MD Walk Karo International a huge round of applause as he joins us on the stage Thank you with this Nazia the stage and screen uh, is all yours take it forth Thank you Bhavna thanks a lot So uh, we are already starting late and uh, this is also the final session so we must end it on a high note and I'm so uh, glad that I have such dignitaries and uh, as you all know this session was originally to be uh, moderated by anurag sir so i have very very big shoes to fit into uh, i don't think i'll be able to do justice to that so uh, as you all know we are uh, today celebrating brands of bharat and uh, i'm very privileged to be sitting with the sorry can you hear me so i'm very privileged to be sitting with the dignitaries who have really uh, launched uh, four uh, very uh, renowned brands for us so uh, I will not do much of talking I let them do more of it and uh, I would want to start uh, with Mr Ranga uh, with my first question which is about uh, because his is also the oldest you know brand his, his brand started in 1948 uh, you know if you can tell us about uh, you know the story behind the inception of the brand how did it come in uh, what was the inspiration you know the entire concept you know how did the concept come in thank you thanks for the opportunity welcome everybody um it's truly an honor to be recognized as a bharat brand that's what we are my grandfather is the true entrepreneur in the family sri n rangarao come from a very poor background in madurai district in a small village called watraipu if you look at our family legacy we are either purohits or teachers in our family my grandfather lost his father in 1920 during the great plague similar to what we have now so through his life it was always a struggle for him in school he had to go to the wholesale market buy sweets come and sell it outside his school to make his uh, uh, pay for his school fees and things like that and he was a man who always dared to dream and when he got an opportunity to move out of his village he went to arvangat the cardite factory is working there as a bookkeeper then he moved to kurg as a accountant in one of the consolidated coffee works and around 1948 when india got independence he said this is the time i need to start my own journey with his four children wife aged grandmother he left everything moved to mysore with just you know meager uh, savings that he had and started our agarbatti business in 1948 very quickly he realized that to sell a brand you need a core competence and so he said fragrance creation is going to be a key he set up a fragrance creation lab and then he said we need a brand and the genius that he was he said i need to create a brand that everybody in the country would understand immaterial of their background and he said you know in 1948 everybody knew what a cycle was and it was an aspirational uh, product so he said cycle pure agarbatti as affordable as a cycle and that's how we started the brand and that's how we coined the word cycle today i think it's synonymous with prayer and spirituality and well being as well and that's how the legacy started ethical business practices were always the core of the business and that's one of the reasons why we were able to scale as well into the third generation of the family business now and it's been a tremendous legacy that he set for all of us he passed away in 1980 but his legacy still continues thank you it's really a very very inspiring story so i think i can go in the order of the the age of the brand so i can come to you now sir so uh, what's the uh, inspiring story behind surya roshni so surya roshni was started by uh, gentlemen our founder chairman bd agarwal uh, it started with steel pipes 
So that was a business in 1973. And about 10 years later, we started the lighting business. Uh, and then we started fans and appliances about seven years ago. So it's been a few generations. Uh, so B.D. Agarwal, then Mr. J.P. Agarwal, uh, and now the next generation, the third generation of the family which is running the businesses. And in fairly diverse businesses, so steel pipes is quite different from lighting, is quite different from fans and appliances. Uh, but in each one of them, I think the core has remained the same, which is, I think, very similar. A focus on quality, a uh, focus on innovation. And in the case of lighting and consumer durables, a real focus on semi-urban and rural India. So the real Bharat, which is our strength, so our distribution is our strength, it's very difficult for anyone else to replicate. So that's, I think, been the history. So that's another uh, Bharat brand, sir. Uh, you, were, you started in 2000, right? So if you can tell us behind, what was the inspiration behind starting this natural saloons and spa. Thanks, Nazia. And it has some 700 out outlets yeah. across uh, various uh, states of uh, South southern India. India. South India. And uh, we are waiting for him to come to Mumbai. I have to do a disclaimer. I'm not an uh, ice cream brand. <laughs> okay, that's, that's how I have to uh, talk in Bombay. But in South India, we are a very popular salon chain. And uh, my wife, Veena's refusal to continue as a housewife was the beginning of the brand Naturals. Veena could have easily stayed home and glorified herself as a homemaker, or she could have sought a job. She was very particular. She said, I want to be an entrepreneur. And that's the exact beginning of the brand Naturals. Today, in this country, a gross injustice is happening against women. We are still fighting for a 33% reservation. When we rightfully deserve 51%. The women are not ready to take any responsibilities and authorities. Authorities and responsibilities are never given. It is taken. The big problem in this country is women want to be very comfortable. The most dangerous zone to be in is the comfort zone. And that is what is the problem. And that is what men are exploiting. And that's exactly... I like to disagree on that one. And that's exactly what I wanted to, what you call, use that problem into an opportunity and take that forward. Because that's the big problem. Today, out of 15 prime ministers, only one was a woman. Out of 16 presidents, only one is a woman. Less than 3 percent. I will give you statistics, how much ever you want. We can disagree and argue. Okay, less than 3 percent of women are seen in the corporate board and political board. And that's the reality in front, because they are not ready. I only disagree on the fact that uh, they want to be in the comfort zone. That is the reason. I mean, there are many other challenges which for which we can have another panel discussion on some other day i will now come to uh, the youngest brand which is which is already done i mean you started in 2012 and he has already done so well that today he's uh, you know sharing the dice with somebody who started in 1948 so uh, so t tell us about uh, wakaro uh, international yeah yeah, Vakro, uh, I, I belong, uh, my family is uh, ha also having a footwear business and uh, we start, it, it is into mass market. So we created a new brand uh, to cater uh, economy range of footwear and uh, for export. So 2012 we started with one plant in uh, Andhra Pradesh and 2013 we started another plant in Coimbatore, then in Gujarat, then in Delhi, Bangalore. And now, this year, we are planning one unit in uh, Rajasthan. So, uh, we started with uh, export and uh, shoes, different types of footwear. And after some times, we conducted a POV, because why, what should we do, etc. So, uh, we studied the behavior of uh, people. So, uh, the people are not content. They want uh, change, constant change. And uh, fashion is so important, so we want to change very fast. So now we are launching around 50 designs every month, and we, withdraw, we are withdrawing 50 designs. So we, are, we want to be fast in fashion. So uh, we, we are uh, the managing more than 1,000 SKUs at a time, including color and size level, more than 5,000 uh, uh, SKUs. Uh, so uh, as a team, it's uh, it, it's working well. Uh, how many thousand people work for you? 
7000 in our role and uh, we we are a lot of vendors for us so and uh, another 7000 uh, um, uh, people work with our vendors because we have our senior workers become our stitching vendors and uh, they work for us that's really remarkable sir thank you so, uh, mr ranga i want to come back to you uh, i mean we may not go back to 1948 but you know in last 20 30 years or as far as you can go. What was the market situation uh, for your category then? And uh, what were the main uh, challenges or opportunities for you then? Now, each uh, generation faces specific challenges. If you look at the time of when my grandfather was setting up, Agarbati in itself was not a very glamorous business. He remembers times where one of our managers could not get a bride. Uh, bridegroom because he was working in an Agarbati company. So that was the challenge that he faced. So each generation had its challenges, government regulation, bureaucracy, getting licenses for importing raw materials. These were challenges the earlier generation faced. And then when you come to the time when my father and uncles took over the business, it was about scaling the business growth, following ethical business practices, communicating the value systems that have been passed down from generation to generation, maintaining financial discipline and all of that. And then when I came in in the year 2000, it's been 22 years since I've joined the business, the challenges were completely different. Government had liberalized, natural materials were available, supply chain integration was already possible. So I had to focus predominantly on the value chain and building our distribution network and getting our product to market and to consumers across the country and that's what my focus you know changed to so today if you look at it cycle agarbati has 5000 distributors across the country who are the pillar of the company supported by 2000 sales representatives who are company employed and we directly service almost 8 lakh retail outlets and indirectly 15 lakh outlets and the people of the company are the strength the biggest challenge that i am facing today is in managing our people and then scaling for growth continually Innovation has never been a challenge because that's in the brand ethos for us. Constantly innovate and that's the reason why even after 40 years we continue to be the largest selling Agarbati brand in the world. Thank you. I think you guys can also clap. <laughs> so. so I think when we started lighting back in 83, there was one large multinational company which had been in India for a long time and had a very significant presence. And there were a couple of Indian brands which were already there in that space. So it was a market which had established players. So the real job for us over the years has been actually making that transformation across technologies. So back in 83, it was about GLS bulbs and tube lights, then it moved to CFL a few years later, and then it moved to LED about 10 years ago. So just making those transformations, both in terms of technology, manufacturing, uh, the entire value chain, to make sure that we stayed ahead of the market and remained relevant. I think that's really been the story, making sure that we made every technology leap as and when it happened, and sometimes before time. For naturals, uh, the, it's, a, it's a considered to be a taboo industry in 2000. Um, I always used to say that we are a, a byproduct industry of a larger revolution created by Narayana Murthy's and Azim Premji's of the world. Um, in 1947, Gandhi and team has got India the political freedom from Britishers. In 1991, Manmohan Singh and Narasimha Rao gave us the economic freedom. So the India after 1991 is a completely different animal. And after 2000 especially, it has grown into full size. And people were spoiled by choices. Before that, one ambassador car and Fiat car used to be there. One, one phone, one air, airline. And that is how the country was there before 90s. And today, we have been spoiled by choices. And suddenly, the first salary of the daughter is more than the last salary of the father. And the young kids have got a lot of disposable income, which they want to spend on lifestyle industries. That is where opportunities like salons, um, um, real estate, uh, cars, bikes, pubs, restaurants, all this industry came into life only after 2000. And we are in, in that way, we are very lucky to have entered into that business at that point of time. And we started, we did not know anything about the business. And uh, one of the big advantage uh, is if you don't know the business, you can merrily draw your own, what do you call, you, it, it, there is no rules I don't know. I don't know any of the rules. So we started putting our own, our own rules. 
Veena is, my wife Veena is not a beautician, she is not a hairdresser, she is not a makeup artist, and my knowledge of beauty is even poor. I thought manicure is for feet and pedicure is for hand. So since we don't have knowledge, we started putting our own rules, and that became the rules of the industry at a later point of time. And that's exactly... Now you all should applause. So that's how we have redefined that industry, disrupted that industry, and today made it into a taboo industry is today called a lifestyle industry because of various changes what we have made. Interesting, sir. So in market, uh, we were uh, first mover with uh, newer technology in South India because the products were available in North India and North, uh, the products were coming to South uh, from the North. So when we started with this, this thing, and uh, when we uh, tried to enter new market, as with Tamil Nadu when I started, uh, uh, because I belong to Kerala, so Kerala, the distribution system is good, and there are a lot of uh, good wholesale distributors in each district. But in Tamil Nadu, limited number of distributors, they have the dealership of all item, and they prefer the products with more credit and more uh, uh, margin. So when uh, we went there, they were not ready to accept our product, but we were not ready to change <laughs> our policy because we want we always put customer in the front. So first two years very uh, two years were very difficult for us. Then we uh, we moved to the retail shops. We took took the map of uh, Tamil Nadu. We found how many districts, how many taluk, how many cities, and we went to each and every retail shop, shared our catalog, tried to convince them our product. Some of the, the retailers were convinced, then they started buying. And once they used, uh, and once the customer used, they came back. So repeated customer, we got the repeated customer. And after two years, we got very accelerated growth, and uh, it helped us to <laughs> reach this situation. Interesting. So, uh, some of you are like really old, some of you are relatively new, but uh, I think one of the biggest disruption that has come into our industry has been the digital disruption. And uh, uh, so for, you know, uh, for a brand like Cycle Agarbati, what does a digital disruption mean? I mean, if you can explain it to us and how have you used it to your benefit? Well, um, as a brand, we've always been on the cutting edge of technology. Tell me one factory in India that has started without an Agarbati being lit and puja being done. Tell me one person who has done an Ayut puja for a system without an Agarbati or a prayer. Any factory here for that matter, right? So in that sense, we have been an integral part of people's prayers throughout the generations to follow. That being said, as a brand uh, and as a company, we've been always on the cusp of technology. We were one of the first ones in 1980 to buy Wipro DX2 computers for Salesforce analytics and looking at uh, data in a different way. We've been always pushing the frontier in terms of technology and innovation in our manufacturing processes. Got a GCMS system to evaluate our fragrances so that we deliver consistent quality to consumers. And then we have always believed in empowering our customer to the last mile, and that's been the key differentiator for us. If you look at the way businesses have progressed and what technology and the digital transformation has done, it has transformed our mindset from customer satisfaction to customer delight, to thinking as customer as the king, to now saying customer is God, literally. And that's what technology actually does. And if you look at the recent examples of farm to fork, it's not the farmer whose value is the highest. It's not the intermediary who's bringing the you know, forest, farm produce to the restaurants. It's not the restauranter who's preparing this fine food, and, but it's the delivery boy who's actually delivering the food to the household is become the most valued uh, in the entire supply chain today. And that's the world we live in. So in that sense, we have created our domain called cycle.in, which has now become a one-stop shop for all your prayer and puja needs. Eventually, it'll also start delivering services at home. We have created a domain called purepreyer.com where we can do instant pujas at home in multiple temples across the country. You can also book a pujari who'd come and help you keep your traditions and rituals intact. Um, so, you know, unless we deliver to the customer what they expect continuously, innovatively, and better, it's going to be, we, are not, we would cease to exist. And the digital transformation is one such exercise on the customer front. So, so we are at the cusp of it. We are trying to push whatever we can uh, so that our consumers get the maximum empowerment and then ensure that the consumer ultimately gets addicted 
uh, without paying a cost to using our brand, and that's how empowerment of the consumer increases even more. So have you also uh, started digital advertising aggressively in the last few years? Advertising uh, is in different formats. The biggest advertisement for an FMCG brand, it's the value that it communicates through its packaging and the product that you offer. So we've been predominantly an ATL-led brand doing advertising above the line. We believe in uh, uniting the nation as one. So if you see Cycle is always visible in cricket as an, in, as an advertising media because we believe the nation prays together when India is playing cricket predominantly. We're not on IPL, only on India cricket because the cricket unites the nation, so we continue to invest heavily in cricket in India and other sports as well because we believe sports also builds character. Apart from that, digital advertising we have started now, uh, predominantly Google AdWords and on Facebook uh, is where we advertise. We have started looking at alternate media, but today uh, it's not vi more viable than regular ATL and you know television advertising as yet. So how's been your digital journey? I think there are two parts of it. One is the increasing efficiency and productivity part of it. So we put in distribution management systems, Salesforce automation, et cetera. So that's really helped the business over the last few years. The other part is in terms of digital social media and digital advertising. So I think in the earlier panel, there was a question that Jay asked about what's the uh, spend share for digital. So it was probably closer to about 0% about two years ago. Today, it's about 15%. And in the coming year, it'll probably be about 25%, 30%. So it's fairly rapid increase in terms of the digital spend that we'll be doing. So Marketing is uh, no longer about the product you sell or the services you give. It is about the stories you tell. Where there is a will, there is a way is a old adage. Where there is a will, there is a video. That's the new adage. So that's how much the life has changed in front of us. And that's how much the adaptation has to come um, in, the, in the business. If you call my phone, Karina Kapoor will speak. Karina Kapoor is my telephone assistant. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, today, five years before when we booked Karina Kapoor as a brand ambassador, it was a wow thing. Today, customer no longer believes. They want a neighborhood next to what you call a real uh, life influencer saying that I have walked into natural salon, I have used the product, the service is good, and that's what has got today much more mileage than a celebrity. To earlier, when Shah Rukh Khan was doing the Santro advertising, uh, that red color car, because he was doing that advertising, everybody wanted red color Santro, I believe. So that much was the craze for fan following, for the artists, et cetera, et cetera. Today it is democratized. The, in the social media has taken the, the, what do you call the celebrity status and made celebrities of so many people. I think that is the blessing in disguise what the social media has created. And we are very much, in the, especially Instagram, plays a very important role in terms of both advertising and promotion for us, for the salon business, because it is very photograph friendly and you put it there and that's where you get the likes and the shares and things like that. So we need to completely rethink um, 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 people below 30, uh, understand they are the natives, we are all the immigrants to the, uh, the social media world, but that's the world we are in and we are very fast adopting because our industry is about this, which is the um, digital era. I think Shah Rukh Khan also needs to do some rethinking and come to your saloon for a pedicure. Only then he'll become relevant for you as a brand ambassador. Uh, so how about you? I mean, how much uh, do you use digital? Yeah. When we started uh, our business, manufacturing was a big constraint. Demand was so high and uh, we were not able to supply as per demand. And uh, our people were proudly telling, I just want to say some example, uh, telling that uh, uh, we will supply only 30% of the demand. Then one consultant came and asked me, suppose you run a hotel industry and uh, your customer has come and asked for six idli, will you tell you will give only two idli? <laughs> then we told no. Then uh, that is your incapability, so you scale up your production. So we implemented SAP and it helped us to scale up at the early stage itself. And uh, we, uh, we, uh, and uh, after that, manufacturing was not a constraint. Then sales become constraint. We uh, implemented Salesforce automation. And during COVID, 
we faced a different scenario because um, uh, COVID happened in uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, April, uh, in March, uh, April, because April is our season. April, May is our season. So normally we launch because that uh, that year we made 400 new products and we took order and we started production. We kept everything ready. But after COVID, the demand has changed. The people were asking for flip-flops and low-cost products and uh, all the ladies, kids, and uh, high-value item. There were no sale. So it created a big mess in that year, and we were not able to supply as per the market demand. Because what we, so we changed from planning to demand-driven manufacturing in the next year. So we, we, we implemented a software, uh, demand-driven planning. And uh, we captured the demand, and this year uh, we could uh, uh, supply as per the market demand, uh, and we got 18% growth. So what role did digital play in all of this? Yeah, because it's all digitalization. Because without uh, this demand-driven planning, is an entirely a software oh. which captures the demand from the customer uh, and uh, align the entire production from raw material. To each and every operation, we digitalize and we manufacture as per the demand. So this, uh, last year we implemented up to our depot. So up to depot, everything was aligned. But our dealers were not able to manage this because this uh, 1,000 plus SKUs and these things, uh, they were not able to manage. So this year we are implementing a distribution management system. We want to digitize their operation also. And uh, we are developing a software uh, for retail uh, application for retailer where they can see the stock of wholesaler and they can place as per the demand. So we want to capture the demand from the retailer itself. And we want to align the entire operation as per the retailer demand. So, uh, so that, that's a big step we are taking uh, this year and hope this will help to grow our business further. Thank you. So uh, this is one of my uh, uh, favorite questions. You know, I would uh, want to again start with Mr. Ranga first. Uh, you know, in in this long uh, brand journey that you have of almost uh, 60, 70 years, if you can talk of that one pivot moment, you know, one turning point or one moment uh, when the brand, uh, you know, um, suffered a setback or something, you know, or or that moment where things changed for you, if you would want to talk about that one thing. I mean, uh, over the years, if you see, there have been very many uh, pivotal points for the brand in terms of product extension, new brand uh, launch, new creations, entering new markets, new geographies. Uh, so there have been multiple such instances of innovation and new product development. But for the company, I think the biggest step was uh, in 1980 when my father visited the market. Uh, this is, again, uh, legend and hearsay for me. I used to go with my father to do van sales. Uh, you know, as early as uh, when I was in age standard, but this is something that uh, I hear uh, inspired him. When he went to a shop, uh, one of the retailers said that uh, consumers who come in keep asking for something new every time. And uh, when my dad, uh, uh, you know, probed a little bit more, he realized that consumers were trying three different products and then shifting back to the original product they first were loyal to. And that's when he came up with the concept of three-in-one, cycle three-in-one, which was three different fragrances in one pack. And uh, that brand today is the largest selling brand in the world. And uh, that was a legendary innovation that he got in his mind in, in the marketplace. And, and I think the rest uh, of it is history for us uh, since then. Which year was this? Sir? This is 1980. 80. Okay. Subsequently, I think, uh, you know, in the last 15 years, uh, one of the other new innovations that we came about is there is a, a practice of Duno at home. Uh, you know, if you go and see traditional households, uh, women use Samrani, uh, you know, on charcoal uh, to... Uh, you know, at home to do that. And we figured out that it was a very tedious exercise. And so we came up with a Samrani encapsulated in a cup, which was very convenient to use. And uh, that's again, and the brand is called uh, Naivedya. And that's again changed the uh, path of the industry. So so whenever you innovate, uh, you know, rightly as Mr. Kumar mentioned, you change the path of the industry. And, and as a brand, uh, unless you constantly do that, you cease to exist. Thanks. Oh. If you can... Yes. The big change was moving from being a B2B player to becoming a B2C player. So when you move from steel pipes to lighting, and now pretty much consumers know the company because of the lighting business, because that's really what is prominent, that is what is advertised, etc. 
and then of course getting into uh, consumer durables, so appliances and fans as well. So those were, I think, the turning points when you move from a B two B company to a B two C, and B two B company. So any. So when we started the journey, we decided to purchase a land uh, at Coimbatore from bank. Through auction, we purchased and we paid the money also. And we placed order for machine, and machine from Italy has reached uh, Chennai airport. And uh, unfortunately, there was an issue from central excise, and we couldn't buy that property. And we were in a mess, because, uh, because for us, season is very important, April, May, June. We want to start, because everything happened in this uh, just before <laughs> April, uh, March and all. So that time, we searched uh, for a new, new plant, new location. We got a, from Coimbatore, we, we were operating from Coimbatore. We got a land in Andhra, <laughs> Nellur, near Chennai. So we purchased that land. And uh, uh, the entire thing, uh, uh, we, we started the production within 18 days because this is a very labor intensive work. So we took people uh, from Coimbatore, trained from Coimbatore, and uh, we took machine from Chennai. The entire thing uh, we managed at, uh, um, at, uh, at Nellur, Nellur unit. And uh, we could start production within 18 days, and 21st day we started the uh, sales, and <laughs> and it helped us uh, uh, to because that agility, and uh, when the machine comes also because when the machine comes we ask the Italian technician how much time will you take for uh, installation of machine, so he told uh, normally in India because <laughs> that was a, a very painful word he told it will take more than one week. Then I asked him, our, uh, uh, how, how fast you implemented in other countries? He told uh, we could do in uh, three days in Turkey. So uh, our team was relatively new uh, with uh, one year experience and other, uh, one person was one year experience, all others were fresh people. And I asked them how fast we, we will be able to do. So if somebody has done in three days, we will also do in three days. So uh, after the technician left, uh, I asked the people, how you are going to do? They told, I don't have idea. And you take the catalog, mark the machine, location, et cetera. So the, they did everything, and we, we, we could complete it in within, um, uh, within three days. So when the second machine came, we did in two days. And the third machine, we did in 10 and a half hours, including the unloading. Uh, this calls for an applaud, right? We could do it in three days and then we could do it in two days. So, so we changed the impression of India also. Yeah. So means uh, we, we, we cannot achieve things that we have not conceived in our mind. But we, if we want to do something in a particular time, that is possible. And this young India, <laughs> young people, uh, means we can do everything. Absolutely. So now we are only left with eight minutes. So I think I should uh, put my final question. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, sir. Okay. No sorry. problem, no problem. Thank you. So this happened when I opened my eighth salon, my first salon outside Chennai. It happened to be in Coimbatore. I used to go there every month and spend five days and uh, talking with my partner and the customer. One day my uh, partner introduced me to a woman and a family who used to spend 5,000 rupees every month. I said, thank you very much for your patronage. And she said, I am from Karur. I am coming to Coimbatore monthly twice, only for naturals. Why not you open in Karur? I said, I will do a market survey and then open, ma'am. And I said like that. And before I could do a market survey, she called me again. And she told that I have seen a place. Come and see that. I went to Karur and saw, I saw the place. I liked the place. She invited me to her house. I walked in. There was a BMW on the left-hand side. A yeah, Mercedes-Benz on the right-hand side, and few more small cars. I told myself, why is this lady wanting to open a natural salon? Anyway, I wa walked in, and I met her husband and two sons, two daughter-in-laws. I told myself, 30 lakh loss also will not affect this family. Chalo, let us open. And I opened it. One year later, she called me, and she said, thank you. I asked her for what? She said, this month, I have made 50,000 rupees profit. I said, good, ma'am. You can make up to 2 lakhs. And unknowingly, I added one line. I said, it will be useful for you. So she said, sir, I don't have any money problem. At any given point of time, my house will have 10 lakhs in cash, jewelry, and document extra. But for any money I spend, I need to give accounts to my husband and to my two sons. This is my money. I can spend the way in which I want. 
I said you have made my day. The best fashion... <laughs> the best fashion statement you can make is standing on your own legs. And that's what Naturals represents. Okay, so uh, now we are left with six minutes, so almost roughly my maths is very bad. You can divide whatever time is left. So, uh, and I'll now start with you, sir. Uh, so before we close, I would want to understand from you if there is any one Indian brand, or it can be an international brand, which is not your own brand, uh, whose journey you've really admired and you know you think was uh, remarkable or you know you, you really look up to. I think Tata as a brand and as a company, uh, I think the way that it's been built over decades and decades, uh, with the principles remaining exactly the same uh, over the generations, and the scale that they've built. So it's an Indian multinational now. So I think just the fact that the principles have remained the same and the fact that they've built scale uh, over the years, I think that's why I admire them. Sir. See, I, 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 he already answered my, <laughs> which was in mind. So I also f would like to follow Tata. Okay, uh, Mr. Kumar. My thing oh, is, uh, my thing is, uh, he will yeah, my thing is IPL. I think before IPL, the cricket was actually dying. Mm -hmm. People were no longer were wanting to see the five-day match, one-day match because of lot of scandals, this and that. The cricket was losing its sheen and it was completely going haywire. Here comes IPL. Suddenly, from the competitors have become collaborators. The white dress has become color dress. And there was so much fun around that match. And the sponsors were happy. The players were happy. The Everybody involved in the game. The game itself got a facelift. So in my mind, that is in a way of reinventing the entire cricket as a game. And that's exactly what we have to do. Alvin Toffler puts it so beautifully. He says, the illiterates of the 21st century are not the ones who cannot read and write. The illiterates of the 21st century are the ones who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. I think IPL has completely unlearned and relearned, and that's what has made it very special brand. Mr. Ranga, please have the final word. Wow, uh, it's a very big question. Uh, what brand do you admire or appreciate or, you know, envy? You know, a brand is something that you're addicted to. Can I live without my Apple phone? I don't know, I can probably shift to something else. What can I live without? Or what is there that I will sacrifice everything that I have? I keep thinking there are so many brands in India that are legendary. You look at a brand like Amul, you look at so many brands that are just amazing. But one brand that's been created over the last 15 years for me, let me hold my head in pride when I travel or whenever I go anywhere. Yesterday I was actually in Uttarkan doing a trek in Panwali Kanta. And the guide in front of me, uh, you know, I'd never talked to him and I was just talking to him and he said one thing. I was talking to him about Uttarkan, the elections, and he said, Sir, we Modi ji ke liye jaan bhi de denge. That's what he said. And I think what brand Modi has been able to create for India over the last so many years, for me it's inspirational. You either love it or you don't. But that's what a brand actually is. You're willing to do anything for the brand. And, and for that person behind the brand and the values that it personifies and the pur purpose by which it is led. And so I think what India has been able to do and what you know, Modi ji has been able to create is something that's inspirational and a lesson for all marketeers to learn with or without an MBA, of, of what he's been able to achieve. If somebody is willing to give their lives for him, then there's nothing more you can ask for as a brand. Thank you. That's interesting. We had very, uh you know, uh, different kind of answers from uh, Tata to IPL to po a politician. Uh, we still have two minutes if there's anything uh, that I missed asking that you would have want to add. Please feel free to add. Anything would you, you would want to add? Sir? Yeah, I think for me, uh, a brand is represented by the people that are in the company first. So when anybody tells me what is quality, I said quality starts from within and, and from the people that are in our organization, each and every one of those 7,000 employees that we have, also the partners and stakeholders that are aligned with the company. So if somebody says cycle 
is good, it has maintained its quality, it is because of the people that we have. And right from supply chain to production to operations to marketing and sales, each and everybody in the company are the ones who brought us to the level that we are. And they are the true representation of what the brand and the company stands for. And as a company, we believed in women empowerment. We have close to 30,000 women who are intertwined with the business day to day. Uh, you know, tribal women in Gachiroli, all the way up to people in Orissa, in Balasur. So as a company, we believe in being forward thinking and sustainable. And as a brand, I think all of us need to realize that unless you care for the environment in the long term, none of us cease to exist. And we are the only carbon neutral Agarbati manufacturer in the world. And I'm proud of that. We only use recyclable material and we use high quality ingredients in everything that we produce. And all of this has to actually be led through a purpose. And our brand purpose remains to do the right thing every single time with every single prayer. And that's what we stand for. So now that we have time, I'll ask one more question. Uh, uh, you know, if uh, you all have made us very proud, you know, we've, we've created brands for India. Uh, if there is just one challenge in the current scenario that you would want to talk about that, you know, we as Indians still need to fight or, you know, as, as uh, in, in the corporate sector. So if there's one thing that you would want to talk about, any one of you can start and uh, keep it brief because Bhavna has already come on the stage. Just one challenge that you believe you face as, as um Check, check. Mm. I know there could be a lot of challenges, but I'm sure there could be one major challenge. We'd start with one you. Challenge Just one challenge please. That's still there. I think the, in, in India, uh, to do business during a normal time, all entrepreneurs should be given Padma Sri. For doing business during the Corona time, <laughs> we should all be given Bharat Ratna. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> what I can say. I think to entrepreneurs are the new age freedom fighters who will pull India from the shackles of poverty. <laughs> that's exactly what I feel all entrepreneurs should come and do together. Wow. What is the challenge that you face? Now, I think the biggest challenge that I personally face is uh, the, the ability to dream big and dream beyond uh, boundaries and geographies and, and sex and all the other uh, you know, hindrances that we have growing up. There's a huge legacy uh, uh, you know, here and empowerment is something that I believe is the solution to all the challenges that we face and, and, and the fact that we should dare to dream and dream big and, and, and push the boundaries. We've seen 50 unicorns that have been created in the last five years. Uh, they've all done that. Right, so legacy companies transforming themselves, adding value to consumers will continue to remain the challenge and not stuck in old ways and move forward aggressively. And I completely second Mr. Kumar's view, entrepreneurs need to be celebrated, not shunned upon. Absolutely, that's what we are doing today. We are celebrating all of you and uh, we are very happy, we are very proud of each one of you. We have some 170 uh, brands today, you know, uh, people from uh, across the brands joining us in the evening. I hope you all stay back. Sir, anything that you would want to add? I think the challenge is building scale across industries. I think becoming another China is something that we should aim for and we can definitely do. But in a lot of industry, we still haven't hit the kind of scale and price points that we need to to become large global players. So I think that's really the challenge now. Anything you would want to add? And lastly, lot, you, sir, please go ahead. A lot of opportunities in India. Uh, because uh, we are capable, we, we, we and it is the right time. And in footwear industry also, because uh, we are using less than three pairs, less than global average in India. So big opportunities and hope uh, in coming years will be a big growth. We can see. Thank you. Thank you, each one of you. Thank you so much, Mr. Ranga, Mr. Kumar, uh, Mr. Sai, and uh, Naushad sir for joining us. Thank you, Bhavna. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge, huge round of applause. And uh, as we have our dignitaries on stage, may I request uh, Akshat Sahu, Director of Marketing, Share Chat, to kindly join us to give away the mementos uh, to our uh, panelists. So if you do have, yes, Mr. Sahu. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, a huge, huge round of applause. Please uh, come towards the front as we give away the mementos to our panelists. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, you can be much more louder and lenient with your applause. These are the brands who've made India so proud, who have become the top sellers over the years. So I'm sure they deserve a bigger round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. And also, as we have a selfie being taken on the stage, we're going to be having...
special mementos given by Mr. Arjun Ranga, MD Cycle Pure Agarbatis to our panelists. So I just request uh, the uh, special mementos also to be given out, of course, after the group photograph. So please stick around. Mr. Ranga, if you could please give mementos from your side to the panelists. First up, Mr. CK Komarawal. Thank you so much. That's from Sir's end. We've got Mr. Nirupam and Mr. V. Noshad. Three Memento special ones for our panelists. Thank you. Thank you for gracing us on this. Could we have one photo with all of them and the special mementos as well? Let's do that. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless.